No, I'm just kidding. Thank you to Avail. Appreciate you so much. Today's case is a 67 year old gentleman. Um, he's a laborer. He has left knee pain. That's where we are today. You see, I'm working here on the left knee. Sudden onset of medial knee pain with mechanical symptoms. So, so there is x rays you can see uh, on the left knee. He has some arthritis on the medial aspect of his joint. You can see. What arthritis is really, guys, is arthritis is the wearing away of normal cartilage. So those bones are getting closer and closer together. So you can see that on the medial aspect of his left knee. That's right where we're working today. You can see what we call the AP and the PA flex view. But click one more time. I want to show you he has actually severe arthritis of his other knee, the right knee. He has no pain there. So we're going in with the knee scope to hopefully cure his mechanical symptoms from his meniscus. Go ahead and advance. You can see that uh, the MRI gives us a lot more information. Just go ahead and click that next slide there. Yep. So what we'd want to do is we want to go x-ray to MRI. One more click. Just keep going just for the sake of time. These guys are getting uh, halfway through their coffee. So this is the MRI images, the T2 sequence. You can see medially here, he has a meniscus there. That's that cushion on the inside, right where that red arrow was in our last image. Click one more forward and you'll see I dropped some arrows in there. So that's the medial meniscus tear. That's the cartilage damage that we see. And one more arrow, there should be a little bit of bone bruising uh, right there, the medial tibia. So next slide shows just a different sequence of the MRI. I just want to illustrate that uh, x-ray alone is not always uh, the end-all be-all. This guy, for example, has bone-on-bone -bone arthritis of his other knee, but no pain. So anyway, we're after the medial meniscus tear today. Thank you. Um, so let, let's kind of go into the procedure now. So Ryan, I don't know if you could drop in above, man, but uh, kind of show them what we're looking at here. So I've marked out the kneecap, obviously, marked out the patellar tendon. Knee arthroscopy is really performed uh, going on either side of the patellar tendon underneath the patella. So that's what we'll do. That's how we'll access the joint. Um, you know, Ryan, that was a great introduction. I know there's a lot of other avail guys on the call. So if you all have any questions during it, feel free to interrupt me. Or That's the joy of procedural telemedicine. You can actually correct me during the case. You don't have to wait until after like my wife does. So I just made an incision there, guys. And then I placed the arthroscope, uh, actually the tube uh, inside underneath the kneecap. And I think we'll, yeah, we'll pull up the uh, image and you can see exactly what we're looking at here. So the whole idea with arthroscopy, I know we have some varied experience on the call today. The whole concept is, is we're going to kind of distend the joint. Yep, thank you. Distend the joint with uh, water just so we can see and look around. And uh, I wanted to particularly illustrate this case because, believe it or not, even though you say, oh, this is the knee scope, that's pretty straightforward, this case can be a little bit controversial. Um, remember how I said arthritis is the wearing away of normal cartilage? So you hear orthopedic surgeons all the time talk about, oh, I'm going to scope his knee and I'm going to clean out his arthritis. Well, again, arthritis is the absence of normal cartilage. So we can certainly smooth out damage. You can see the damage here of this cartilage. This is a normal area of cartilage. So that would be um, no evidence of articular damage. That's what it should look like. But you can see there are other areas where it's frayed and torn, much like a worn road. So he certainly has some arthritic change. We'll look at that further. That's his kneecap uh, above us. So you can see on the screen on the top and what we call is trochlea. So that's a femur behind. So really his trochlea looks pretty good. That cartilage is pretty normal. Outer bridge is a classification. Outer bridge one cartilage, uh, damage is just some softening. So he does have some softening there. You'll notice that I'm using saline, right guys, which is clear, but you'll notice that yellow fluid, normal knee fluid is yellow. So that's why you see that kind of yellow wave from time to time. This is what we call the lateral gutter. You might want to make sure nothing's loose and uh, sitting over here in the pocket. And I don't see anything of consequence. That's just me flushing out the uh, synovial fluid. See a little bit of debris here, but most of that stuck to his capsule. So we don't want to really remove that or tear that out. We're going to go down the medial side now, guys, best I can, as I'm looking for through uh, several, oops, turned off the water, had my suction turned on, rookie mistake. <clears throat> and that, now we're inside the uh, medial aspect of the joint, okay? So what you see here, I'm going to actually open another portal. I've got the lights dim, Ryan. I don't know if you can see me create this other portal, but uh, if you want to go to the overhead cam and the arthroscopic cam. Yep. So here, here, here's my needle and I'm going to actually create this other portal. I don't know if you could show the overhead and the, yeah. And so what I'm doing is I'm, you can see my needle now inside the knee. So I want to get the right trajectory to make sure I can reach that meniscus there. 
which I'm kind of staring at there. So they'll pull out the needle for me and I'll make another incision here, just like so. Had a mentor that said, if you go through the vein on the medial side, it must be the perfect portal. So then this is the trocar, just to opening up that hole to make sure I have access. And so now I can kind of look around. It's really this meniscus there is what we're after today, guys. So the meniscus, and I'll show you the lateral meniscus here in a second. I see the probe. Um, the, uh, the, the, the meniscus is cartilage. You know, that's a term that gets confused too. So there's articular cartilage, which we've already talked about. This is normal cartilage, so outer bridge zero. This is kind of softening, so outer bridge one. This is a little bit deeper, so outer bridge two. By the way, four, outer bridge four is when you can see a bone. I don't see any exposed bone in the joint yet. But this is the meniscus. So the meniscus should be one solid piece of tissue. I always mention to people, it's kind of like a, like a marshmallow. It sits into the joint and acts like a shock absorber. But you can see this is not one piece. This is torn all kinds of the bits. And that's what we saw on the MRI. So let's have the oyster biter. So what we do is we remove the torn part of the meniscus. Just uh, whatever biter we have. And, yeah, perfect. So there are a lot of different, you could open that one too. There are a lot of different instruments that we use. And so that this is, this is just a straight biter. And it is exactly what you think. Again, sorry to insult any of the orthopedic surgeons uh, on the uh, line. Um, so all I'm doing is, is biting away the torn part of the meniscus. You know, you hear people talk about, oh, I have my meniscus repaired. Well, certainly in some clinical situations, we repair the meniscus, but when you've developed arthritis change or, you know, are older, we tend to just remove the torn part. So oftentimes I'll hear, hear people at church say, hey, I had my knee scope when we repaired my meniscus. Well, I don't want to correct them at church, <laughs> but they probably just removed it. And so that's what Ryan was telling us about the meniscectomy. So we're going to remove all the portion of this meniscus that's torn. And you'll see that when we get done here, what we leave behind will obviously be far less tissue, um, but nothing will be caught or hanging in the joint that can cause damage. So I'm gonna do this kind of intentionally in a couple of sequences here, guys, just so you can see um, exactly what we're doing. So we started with that pretty nasty tear, and then now we're just, this is a shaver that's just gonna take out all the badness and make everything beautiful again. So you can see how it's not, you know, now it's just missing, right? So that's where meniscectomy comes from. We're removing the torn part of the And again, the reason why I picked this case is because the, the clinical question here, the clinical debate, as, as quote unquote simple as this case is, the clinical complaint is how much can a knee scope help in a patient that already has arthritis? Well, because he has bone on bone on the contralateral side, I thought it was worthwhile. Uh, to debride his meniscus, smooth out the cartilage damage. We call that chondroplasty and give him the best shot. He actually has no pain. I think I mentioned that a couple of times, but he has no pain in his other knee, despite the x-ray is bone on bone. Is that projecting well? Can you all see that pretty good? <clears throat> Any questions from the audience as I'm uh, just sawing things away here? Would anybody do anything different? It's okay. We're all adults here. You can tell me. Curve shaver. <clears throat> Let me have that straight lighter too. So you can see I'm just working back the meniscus, right? Because I want to remove all the torn portion of the meniscus, but obviously I want to save as much of the meniscus as I can. I asked my mom to log on to ask me questions, but she's probably still sleeping in. Bless her. So lots of times the question comes up, you know, when you when you smooth out the cartilage damage, aren't you aren't you removing more cartilage, right? Aren't you making the arthritis worse? And that's actually true. I think that I think if people ask that question, they understand the process here. We're trying to take away the mechanical problems uh, of the uh, torn tissue, but you'll also note I'm trying to be real careful and leave as much of this meniscus as possible because again, the meniscus is a cushion that protects the cartilage. So anything I can leave, I want to leave. And then any of this softening of the cartilage or fraying, you know, kind of looks like fur, we debride that. We kind of call that mowing grass. Let me see a probe. So you can see where we are now versus where we started. Pretty dramatic difference there. 
and I want to probe and make sure there are no loose pieces there. I'm actually pretty pleased with that. Let's say that curve shaver one last time. The Dr. Callendon, I asked that question, would they do anything different? And 100% came back, said no. Oh, good. Sweet. Okay. So, me, so that's good. Because I think this is being recorded. So I, I guess this could be submitted to a court of law. Um, you know, listen, this whole platform, guys, all kidding aside, it is, um, I'm so excited about what it can do. Ryan mentioned in the introduction, my space is largely uh, robotic joint replacement. And, uh, you know, we, we, we don't have all, I'm, I'm thankful that people agree with this treatment plan, obviously, but the, the reality is, is we don't have all the solutions and all the answers for robotic arthroplasty. So uh, as we evolve that, you know, I think this type of procedural telemedicine, you don't have to come fly here uh, to the greater Nashville area. You got a, a fat, fat uh, trocar. You don't, you don't have to come here to the greater Nashville area to see me do a scope or how I think about a scope or see me do a robotic knee. Um, you can actually just drop in on the veil, um, do half a cup of coffee, and I'll, I'll tell you everything I know. So this is the lateral side, guys. Right, I don't know if you could do the um, overhead camera. Yeah. So we're, if you can back up with that camera a little bit or maybe even go to the room camera, you'll see that I'm in what we call the figure four position. Do you have a little lap? <clears throat> So what I'm doing is I'm kind of open up the lateral side, guys. So um, now I have this probe in the medial aspect and you can see on the screen. Yeah, so there's a figure four position. So now I'm in the lateral side. Remember I told you I was gonna show you what a, uh, a lateral menis uh, a meniscus looked like, a normal meniscus. And this is the lateral side, which actually looks pretty good. So there's the meniscus. You can see just a little free edge fraying there, but no tear. I pull on it, no problem. There are some loose bodies. I'm gonna put a shaver in there, kind of clean that out. Dr. Callahan, <clears throat> there's a question. Yeah. When would you consider a pair versus a debridement? Yeah, it's a good question. So, you know, if you're 18 and you had a specific injury, right? Um, then, then obviously we lean uh, repair. So age and mechanism matters. Most of the tears in this patient population, you got that probe? are degenerative, which means they've been there for a long time, but it also matters what portion of the meniscus is torn. So I'm just gonna put my probe back in here. So way up here on the edge of the joint here, right where the meniscus attaches, we call it the red, red zone, which means there's a lot of vascularity. But if your meniscus tears in the middle, we call that the red, white zone, that has harder top trouble healing. And ultimately if it, if it tears on this inside edge, that's the white zone. There's really not much vascularity. So the tear has to be in a young person with no arthritis and really more towards the edge, closer to the attachment of the meniscus in order to have a chance at repair. At least that's what the book says. Um, you know, that, 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 that's what we do and it's a good question. You know, I, I think I've said several times, it's really important guys to save as much meniscus as you can. I'm gonna go back to the kneecap. Remember I said the kneecap showed the area of cartilage damage. So again, I am underneath the kneecap. That's the kneecap on, on top. I'm gonna to kind of bounce it with my fingers. That's a trochlea underneath. And I, again, I'm gonna do that mowing the grass. I'm just gonna smooth out that cartilage damage as best I can to help prevent mechanical symptoms, right? I'm not really improving arthritis here. Okay, go ahead and massage the joint. I'm gonna have the team here just kind of pump the joint, make sure I get all those loose bodies that are trying to hide from me. And I don't know if we can pull the audience or not, but I'd love to know who's done with their coffee and who's still working on it. If it was a venti, no way you finished your whole day. And that's it, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove all the, uh, we can drop back to the room cam and come up with the lights, guys. Um, come back, fresh lap. Come back to the room cam and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to remove, suck all the water out, remove the instruments. And on to the next case. We're going to close it. You can see what I got here. I don't know. What are, you, what are you looking at there, Ryan? Are we looking at overhead? You can see really all that stuff that I saw in the knee. I did it through two small poke holes. So here's the medial one. And then I have a lateral one right here. You can turn the leg a little bit so you can see that better. But I just have two small poke holes. I did all that through uh, little holes with this, uh, you know, with the arthroscope, with this just little camera here. Uh, Makes it really easy. Obviously, there's a light on the end. So we, we can do a lot of stuff. In fact, now we're even doing some scopes uh, 
uh, in the clinic, which is kind of an interesting concept. The problem is, is those holes are so small, you can't really do any of the good work there. So we tend to still bring them into the operating room, do a traditional arthroscopy and off we go. I'm gonna inject the knee before, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to inject the knee. You know, this is this is a debate for us uh, in orthopedics. You know, we put a little numbing medicine in there so they don't hurt so bad. I'm going to put a little steroid in there too. Uh, he does have some arthritis. I think that'll help him post stop. Any other questions or thoughts or anybody interested in coming back for maybe a robotic case uh, in a couple of weeks? That'd be great. Can you hold that right there? This is just injecting the knee. If you get, I assume if you're watching, you don't get squeamy, but I'm just going to go right underneath the kneecap. Inject the knee, and off we go. Yeah, let's do two simples in each. Okay, guys, any other questions? So um, for your poll, everyone's yeah. done with their coffee pretty much now, it says. Okay, okay. all right. All right, all right. <laughs> On the other side, yes, definitely they are interested in coming back to watch a robotic case, so we will get that together. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Listen, have a great day. Thanks to Avail. Appreciate everybody in here. You know, they got here a couple minutes early so we could do this first thing and they've got a big day in front of them. So I appreciate all the people that made it uh, made it possible. Um, feel free to reach out to me here or any other way, guys. I'd love to collaborate with you. I think that's really a, what it's about. You know, the Zoom platform, right? What's their logo? We deliver happiness. So for me, uh, I think uh, with Avail, I think Sure, we deliver happiness, but I think the reality is hopefully we deliver excellence and really push forward medicine. Not only in education for us, surgeon to surgeon, but surgeon to patient, and obviously with industry, uh, hopefully we're able to really find the better solutions for the patients. You guys have a great day. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Callendine. We so appreciate you and your team there for letting us come in. I'm just going to share your contact and information here. If anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out at Corey Callendine MD on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Thank you, Dr. Callendine. Yes, sir. Brian, good to be with you. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. And it, should anyone like to see other upcoming events, please visit us at abel.io on the events page and go ahead and sign up and register for different events. This will conclude.